afternoon. I am Cookie Kim from KYO. I'll be talking about drug development and license by QBD based on ICHQ3, Q3, Q3O Q&A. When I say I'm involved in QBD, many people asked same questions and I'll try to provide answers to those questions. It's been 10 years since the introduction of Q-Trio. I'll be talking about the related issues and the flexibility in the regulation is important in QBD. QBD is required for the flexibility. But coming up with a rigid or fixed answer goes against the very concept of QBD. So I will just share my opinion. And depending on the strategy and product knowledge for each pharmaceutical company, um, your um, selected approach could be different. The beginning of QBD. Different um, interpretations, but mostly um, we think that um, risk-based approach um, in 2002 FDA guidance is the starting point. QBD-related activities and concepts are all explained here. So this is the, uh, the, the starting point. There are two important points. QBD is a current GMP. GMP uh, was talking about what needs to be done. But by having current after 1990s, in other industries, various quality management methodologies were introduced. So the quality was greatly enhanced in other um, industries. Pharmaceutical industry um, decided to introduce similar concepts and that's how the concept current came in current uh, is f for now so um, as time passes um, current becomes new so by having this current concept on top of a uh, GMP um, the door toward new um, options and improvement is open Risk-based approach was also recommended from this approach. The trend for quality management has changed. In 1940s, there was a shortage of a supply, so it was mainly about increasing production and reducing reducing uh, prices. Supply of material was important. It was uh, imperial, um, the era of imperialism, so it was all about getting materials from other countries. In 1950s and 60s, uh, the defect ratio increased. And it was difficult to meet the quality standard and there was a need for selecting good quality products and that's when QC uh, was introduced in 1970s and 80s the reject ratio must be reduced and technology intensive products uh, needs to be manufactured Japanese electric electronic industry, for example, um, the development and creation of Walkman, the small um, stereo, um, was a big change. From manufacturing process um, all the way to the quality improvement, the Japanese approach uh, was a hardest trend. And in 1990s and 2000, mass production with good quality. What use um, we can find? What kind of value we can uh, can we provide to customers? Walkman is replaced with the iPod. How to satisfy fundamental need of a customer? 
How can we change the fundamental design to create new added value? Recently, big data and smart technologies are pushing people to change But I think it's not really about change. It's about improvement of the process, uh, manufacturing process. And I believe smart technology will provide solutions for all of the pending um, challenges. So difference in quality trend in the past New quality management methodologies have been introduced. Um, Samsung Electronics and Hyundai Kia Motors have introduced uh, such as Six Sigma um, customer satisfaction management, design management. They have become a globe. They have become global companies. Pharmaceutical companies need to do the same thing. Pharmaceutical experts around the wor world got together to create QBD. Six Sigma management is based upon risk-based approach. And the tools used are similar to the tools for QBD. Define, measure, design, modeling and verify, improve, control, the same procedure as QBD. When people ask what QBD is, there are six important points to develop pharmaceutical product for patients using risk-based approach, utilizing product and process knowledge, meeting product quality objective, and secure operational space for the manufacturing process, and continuously improve and maintain the operation. The first point for patient, TPP and QTPP. This is the objective of QBD. Risk-based approach includes various options. And this is about how to do QBD knowledge about product and manufacturing process. Um, it's the same as the existing GMP. But now TPP, QTPP, and CQA with addition of relevant knowledge. Space consideration is about design space. It's also about flexibility in regulation. So this is the most important aspect of QBD. TPP is actually from marketing. It was first used to create niche buster. After the era of blockbuster for the remaining market, the niche market becomes import became important and TPP was established to manufacture um, products meeting specific needs. In QBD, TPP um, is introduced 
to satisfy the treatment goal of patients. Since it's from marketing field, um, later, the perspective about how to make regulation uh, more flexible was added. The beginning of QTPP um, was from generic drug development, rapid development of generic, and fast um, time to market. That's the background of QTPP. Quality attributes, uh, such as QC and characterization, the covering those works as fast as possible. That was um, how QTPP was born. Risk-based approach must be applied, and CGMP of USA talks about risk-based approach. So risk-based approach is the keyword in QBD. Another important keyword is line of sight in QBD. QTPP, TPP were already there. The values got integrated under, Q, under QBD. To achieve QTPP, risk assessment was used, criteria was selected. Once QTPP is determined, the required CQA was identified. Once CQA is determined to meet the CQA, what kind of CPP and CMAs are required? So new uh, value chain concept was introduced. QTPP is for the satisfaction of customer, patient. All of these activities are connected to satisfy patients, and that is the gist of the concept of QBD. Then how to write TPP? I usually say it's the contents for the approval document. For example, indications and MOA, those uh, once those are set in the early stage, um, it would help you develop the product better. And TPP also talks about how to boost sales of the final and finished product, which will help you understand, um, which will help you um, reduce the development period and help your sales in the latter part. QTPP is explained in many different ways. For me, I think it's good to find a matching concept from GMP. All of the application documents must meet existing regulatory requirement and GMP. So I think it's valid to find the matching word from GMP. QTPP is the characterization. CQA is for QC items in um, API and finished product and IPC. 
CPP and CMA are for process. Process parameters and raw material characteristics. Design space is CPP and CMA. And the scope that CQA can satisfy control strategy including CPP control strategy is about what to control to maintain product quality Manufacturing process and manufacturing site operation is included in process validation. Everything in Q part was already there. What's different from QBD is that CQA comes from QTPP and risk-based assessment result or data is required. Other than that, everything that needs to be submitted is the same as the past. And there were of supporting data in the past anyway, but everything must be written uh, based on risk assessment. That's the only difference. So QBD is not something that's totally new or that's very difficult to follow. What's added in QBD is risk assessment is used for the supporting argument. Why do we do this? And the answer is for patients. So for patient, all of the um, decision is made. Risk-based management is introduced and the customer satisfaction and quality management is introduced at the same time. The reason QBD is introduced is to improve product quality and meeting new requirements. During that process, there were discussion required between manufacturer and regulatory agency. Apart from GMP requirements, there were additional requirements. Pharmaceutical companies asking for regulatory flexibility. Regulatory authority needs additional development information to be more flexible and open to new development. So during the process, a lot of dialogue um, is required on the submitted information. Between pharmaceutical company and regulatory agencies, there are multiple meetings, a lot of discussion, and based on that, product quality improvement can be achieved, and a part of those efforts is QBD. In the past, for example, it started out as a small bridge, but QBD will make this bridge to become strong and wider bridge. 
continuous interaction between pharmaceutical company and regulatory agency will lead to strengthened product quality. When you look at ICHQ trio Q&A, this is the first question. Is QBD uh, mandatory for approval? No. It's the approval can be achieved with the minimum and traditional approach as long as you provide um, data and information required traditionally. However, The requirement for the approval already reflects the newly learned risk factors coming from QBD. If you provide exactly the same data package of 20, 30 years ago, you may not be very persuasive. In order to make your uh, claim strong, it is recommended to use QBD. And if flexibility is required, you could submit information, including the request for regulatory flexibility. If the flexibility is not required, you don't have to ask for that. But at any circumstances, under any circumstances, having QBD is recommended. When QBD session is done, TPP and QTPP are mentioned together. But I separate them because from TPP, QTPP is determined. First, what kind of uh, requirement is there for a patient? That is the first stage. And then take uh, product characteristics. If those are bundled together, it's difficult to find the uh, basis. So I recommend to have separate TPP and QTPP. QC is determined from QTPP. So we start from TPP and QTPP and QC to complete scientific basis for QC criteria establishment. During the development phase, you need to prepare for this. TPP and QTPP must be separated, and in between, risk assessment must be done, and the supporting data must be collected to make sure that there is no redundancy of the same work in the, la in the later um, stages. For technology transfer, it is clearer for the buyer to see the value of that particular product and approach. Napoleon, after he became an emperor in uh, France, first tried to climb the Alps, cross the Alps. There was this famous line from the comedy uh, program in Korea. When Napoleon went on, went to the top of the mountain, he says, uh, maybe this is not the one, uh, maybe it's that one. So thousands of soldiers following him changed the destination, and they reached the top of the second mountain. And he says, oops, my bad, maybe the first one that we climbed is the right one. And then the soldiers who followed his lead would want to go home. The same analogy can be used for pharmaceutical development. QTPP must be set clearly, um, TPP, so that we could have um, accurate QTPP and CQA which will help you not help you um, not to make the same mistakes. So 
if you start this practice of starting from TPP and QTPP, you'll be able to conquer the world. Risk assessment is done in QBD. Previous speakers talked about it. Risk assessment is part of team building exercise. Many people must participate in risk assessment. This is a tool to make a decision, um, to make a right decision through communication with multiple parties. Decision must be made, and the basis for the decision must be um, documented. Development division and marketing and clinical uh, divisions will join. QTPP, TPP, CQA discussion must continue among multiple divisions and departments so that they can have better understanding about the pharmaceutical product which will help patients and which will uh, sell better. CPP, CMA design space discussion must involve manufacturing department. Involving manufacturing department will reduce the potential confusion. And those items must be included in the process validation from the manufacturing site. The operational strategy and development knowledge are shared. That is why they all need to be part of risk assessment and they all need to contribute in building the basis for risk assessment. To make sure there are no um, issues in the phase of applying for the approval. Participation of multiple departments in risk assessment may um, make the progress uh, slow, but at the end of the day, this is the right approach. Next question. Is design space mandatory in QBD? No. You don't have to have design space. Design space and real-time release testing are not mandatory. You may think design space must be there for QBD. Real-time release testing is a must. QBD activities and risk assessment in between will be enough to uh, become basis for the right decision. So design space and real-time release testing are not must a must. Design space is a very um, hot and um, popular concept. And in the beginning, design space seemed to be able to solve all the questions. Design space is multidisciplinary uh, combination of process parameter and input parameter. The work inside design space is not considered as a change. But once design people thought once the design space is set, any um, variations could be um, approved. But that is not the case. Regulatory agency will ask more questions.
so it will make uh, it more difficult to use design space and maybe manufacturers would give up on using design space I don't have an access to the failure cases, but there are increasing difficulties of utilizing design space. Design space is not mandatory. It's an option. So when deemed necessary, you can use design space. CPP and CMA and other factors can be used. So design space is an option. QBD becomes difficult. And there is an increasing demand for having more regulatory flexibility. Product life cycle management concept was introduced for more flexible change approval. But I don't really follow the discussion here, but there is a discussion on that. This is QBD. This is the flow of QBD. Rather than process validation, it's uh, more of a continuous process of uh, verification. Existing CPP and CMA's acceptance criteria and the models based upon CQA, whether um, it is maintained or not. Through that work, when improvement is required through change control, based on newly found information, the improvement activity uh, is made on a continuous basis. Next question, do we need to have multi-variable uh, interaction of all of the parameters for design space? No. You don't have to have uh, multivariant for the modeling. If it is required, then multivariant is used. But for C CPP selection, as long as you have complete understanding of the process, you could go for single uh, value. It not necessary to always have multivariant for all of the parameters. With the addition of a parameter, DOE requirement uh, is increased exponentially. It's about securing process understanding, and you can never reach 100% understanding of the process as long as you meet the um, required level of understanding continuously increasing the number of uh, process parameter uh, parameters is not recommended as for cpp and cma establishment as long as you have enough um, supporting data you don't have to always have multivariant parameters Is design space um, applied to scale up? Yes. It's all about justification. 
through process verification with a slight change of the model if it works and if you have a backup information design space can be applied to scale up Is it applicable to uh, manufacturing site change? Yes. As long as the model is valid or with a small change, if it's acceptable, design space or modified design space could be approved in manufacturing site change. Design space is not a must. CPP and CMA's range based upon modeling uh, results, as long as everything is valid with minor change, it could be approved for site change and scale up. CPP and CMA range selection can remain valid. So if you apply QBD, whether it is scale up or the site change, you can generate justifications. So it is only natural for the biopharmaceuticals to have a series of changes. So it's better for you to adopt QBD from the developmental phase. That's my recommendation. So uh, there has been many questions about design space. So if I explain design space a bit more, these two pictures are used a lot when we explain margin for QBD. This is the conceptual diagram for margin. So it's not uh, complete to explain all the details of the design space. Um, there is a reason for design space to be not easily accepted. One is that there is no sufficient margin. When you set the margin, you utilize the model. And then the failure calculation is done with the model. Let's say if it is a series sigma, then it needs to be increased to six sigma. So that within the model, the failure probability need to be reduced so that the edge of the failure need to be well set. However, it is difficult to say that all the margins are well set with uh, this only. The actual production batch and models are different in terms of the scales and of course the lab and the uh, site are different. And you know there can be some seasonal changes in commercial manufacturing. So the values that is generated from the testing and from the um, actual manufacturing can be different. So DOE or statistics cause such changes or the differences as error. There can be some different types of the error. One is sampling error and model error. And of the sampling error, there can be many the value error. For sampling error, The test batches used in modeling have different values in ter uh, from the uh, values from the actual production batch. So in order to address the sampling error, when we do the scale up, We need to check whether the regression analysis can be adopted as it is 
or should be uh, modified. So that's what process verification does. And the samples are samples. So we have to continuously verify the process. So good thing about the continuous process verification is that we can continuously improve the model. And when we say CQA, CMA, and design space, let's say we have like 80% of the uh, understanding for process other than the CPP, we can continue to understand differences. For example, the changes into the culture in a different season. So these kind of the changes and the risk can be identified and therefore the life cycle management can be implemented to uh, manage quality. So these kind of the process verification or life cycle management are the tools to address the sampling error. For error, the modeling error, the value from the regression analysis and the actual test value are not 100% the same. So there is a difference. So we design the test very well. That's one thing, that first thing to do. But if there is still a difference, then if we go for the model with a less uh, or weaker uh, interpretation power, then the CPP may not be well uh, set. So in that case, we can repeat the testing. And for margin, actually, uh, the error in model is the biggest problem when it comes to margin. The process validation life cycle management can be the way for here, and the margin setting can be a way for modeling error. And the third error is the, the value, the error in value. If the analytical method is not accurate, then the value can be not accurate. So we need to improve the accuracy of the analytical method. The regulation on the analytical method has been strengthened because the regulators understand there is an error in the analytical method. Starting from phase one, the analytical method validation data is required so that the process batches, CPP or CQA data can be trusted. From the phase one, the validation need to be done on the analytical method, whether it's model or the changes to the established method need to be identified in order to understand potential risk. And for the analytical method validation, the guideline on it, the accuracy and precision requirements are taken out. That does not mean that you can do whatever you want to do. It means you have to raise the bar. When we try to introduce QBD, I think it's becoming a bit more tricky in order to have clear understanding and accurate knowledge of the process and the product, we have to raise the bar in terms of the accuracy and precision in set understanding the CQA. And that's why the requirement on the accuracy and precision were taken out here. You have to raise the bar. And the robustness and SST need to be secured in the development phase of the analytical method.
So when you validate analytical method, accuracy and precision need to consider consider the test methodology and the goals or the objectives and IPA risk and beta risk need to be considered. Let's say, as you can see here, 80% and 100%, 120% would be the alpha and beta risk. Let's say if your error is here, then the IPA risk For IPA risk, although the product here is, the IPA risk is to say to, uh, the rejected, the product that should be rejected is accepted. So let's say this product has 70% because of the error in analysis. Then if there is a 10% error in the analytical uh, method, then let's say the product, although its true value is 70%, it can be seen as somewhere around 80%. So it can be accepted, not rejected. So the product with 70% here can be given to the patients as if their efficacy and safety are falling into higher than 80% level. And if there is a, such a difference here, the variation here, if 80% is safe threshold, then QC standard should be 90% and 110%. Uh, and we can uh, change it into 85% and 115% considering uh, the error or the margin in the te uh, analytical method. So before we create a model, we have to develop and validate the analytical method. So the QVD approach can be adopted in developing analytical method. The same process is applied here as to the analytical method development as the QVD is applied to the process or the product. So the identify ATP or analytical target profile. And here we identify through DOE, which impact on the uh, analytical method, and then uh, set the uh, design space and then implement. Design space for analytical method here, robustness should be guaranteed within this design space. And the validation is to uh, check whether that robustness is guaranteed within the design space. The terms are quite similar here. The QTPP for the pharmaceutical product development, design space, but here it is used as the ATP or MODR for the analytical method QVD. Although the terms are different, the process are the same. The reason for us to conduct the QVD for the uh, analytical method is because it is important in setting the uh, range or target in QC. I talked about three different types of the, uh, errors and they need to be considered in setting margin. TPP is important in QBD and it is always linked to others, other elements. So when we decide the CPP, we have to think about the failure uh, possibility in the model, but at the same time, IPC for the impurities 
and the QC acceptance level for that and the value from the analytical method on the impurity. And in vitro or in vivo models, whether these models need to have uh, the set range or not. And when you uh, decide a margin, you also have to think about the uh, equipment and the site management because there can be some errors occurring. MFDS reviewers from the past, when they look at the IPP or ICP, they look at the RPC standard establishment So QBD is nothing new. QBD is just summarizing or organizing what the regulators already looked into and asked. So in order to answer them, we identify risk first so that we can be prepared in advance. That's the benefit of QBD. The second reason why design space is not easy to be recognized is that people believe that the change is possible within the design space no matter what. However, we do not expect or uh, predict what kind of the changes the manufacturers will make. So the regulators cannot just say that you can make any changes within the design space. So within the operational range, we will make some changes. That can be our response. However, the operational range may not be needed if the design space is quite complete and quite strong. There can be many uh, approaches that can be taken here. I think we can learn a lesson from women's archery of Korea. They are the top one in the world. That's because the QBD approach that they have taken. They incorporated the principles of the QBD in their body. The Korean women's archery team has been the global number one from 19, uh, 1984. Other archers try to have the the center, the target of uh, the center of the target within their eyesight. But the thing is, the Korean archers try to target at the point which is a bit far away from the center. We know it because we have a lot of experience of liking uh, pulling a bow in a windy situation and others. And we are confident when, uh, when, the, when we uh, target at the uh, slightly of the target. So what I'm trying to say is that with a lot of experience, we can target at not the right center, but a little bit away from the center because we know and we experience a lot of targeting and the results of the pulling the ball. And if I make an analogy to chicken, the size 6 chicken is the best one because the, uh, the, the taste is the best. But there can be different size of chickens, so the chicken farms need to grow size 6 chicken a lot. So they, after day 40, the 
chicken farms try to sell the chickens, but when they try to uh, measure the size of the chicken, they realize that they are a size 5 or they are a size 7. It's not good for them. So they conduct DOE in order to release only size 6 chickens. So what kind of the elements affect the growth of chicken? They study it like the type of the feed or type uh, the feed amount or the chickens that do not consume a lot of feed they are taken out and be fed so they do a lot of DOE but it's really difficult because the chickens are living creatures and you know biopharmaceuticals are the based on, on the living creatures there is an easy way Usually, the size is 6 chicken, as you can see from the graph, the chicken arrive at the size is 6 weight and the size around at day 46. So we can set it as a CPP. So from day 40, we can take out or the release the size is 6 chickens. If we do it, we can make all the chickens size 6. When we call, when we do culture, there are many different CPPs that we cannot control that easily. We try to control those variables. Of course, we can control them further so that we can make a more sophisticated way. But easy way, easier way is to set several harvest day so that we can reduce the impurities and then move toward uh, the next step in the process. Then it can contribute to the consistent quality. And if we decide to harvest the date or the time looking into the impurity, if that is our rationale, then regulators will is likely to accept the data because they can see that this data is contributing to the improvement of quality. That's an easy way of implementing uh, QBD and design space. For process validation, Many questions were, were asked about how we go about process validation. The continuous process validation is important. Because I'm running out of time, I will say this. You can refer to the, bio, uh, the biopharmaceutical process validation guideline. It provides a very detailed explanation on the process validation. and how we can utilize the information in the continuous improvement. As I said, we can identify and understand the model errors continuously, and there are some uh, process parameters that we missed out before, so we can continuously improve the uh, process. Traditional approach versus QBD, they have quite a lot of similarities, like the approval process is the same, the required submission are the same, and they, both of them need to comply with the GMP. And the regulators are becoming stringent than before, so we have to apply, uh, we have to comply with the, uh, the same requirements. But there are benefit of QBD approach. From the early stage of the development, we can identify the lead that is well aligned with the uh, development goals. And the goals and objectives will be clearly set from the development stage. And the communication among different functions can be uh, good. And in the green color, I said that we also can improve the understanding of the regulators and also we can be more flexible in operating uh, the process. 
So by utilizing QBD, we can uh, move to the, the global league, the top league in terms of the biopharmaceutical uh, development and the uh, production by applying QBD. So as if the, uh, the Korean women archers, we can be the world leader. So the QBD is good and QBD will bring about a lot of benefits to us. And it's really important to have some flexibility in so the knowledge about the product and the knowledge about the process are well held by the manufacturers. So we need to uh, ask for the flexibility in regulation by utilizing this process and the product knowledge. We just cannot ask the regulators what kind of the flexibility are you willing to give us. Rather than that, based on our knowledge and understanding, we have to uh, ask for the uh, flexibility in regulation. This is the picture of the K-Bio, which is located in Osong area, Korea. And you can see here the MFDS and the Korean Center for Disease uh, Control and Prevention Agency. And you can see also the Advanced Medical Device Development Support Center, Study Animal Center, and Biopharmaceutical Production Center. We do a lot of things that can support the new drug development support. So if you have anything that you need, or if you have any resources or support for the QBD, you can come to us. Thank you.